In this video, we will look at a couple of examples to practice using the ASA, or angle side angle, and AAS, or angle angle side, triangle congruence postulates. So in example A, it says, what information would you need to prove that these two triangles are congruent using the ASA, which stands for angle side angle postulate? So you should notice that in this picture, we're already given two pairs of angles that are congruent. So if we're trying to use ASA, we already have our two pairs of angles. So the last thing we need is a pair of sides in between those two angles that's congruent. So we would need to show that AC, which is the side in between angle A and angle C, is congruent to VU, which is the side in between angles B and U. So we would need to show that AC is congruent to VU. All right, let's go to example B. Write a two column proof. Given angle C is congruent to angle E, so let's mark that in. It's always a good idea to, if you have a picture, to start marking it up to keep track of what you know. And we also know AC is congruent to AE. So we know that this whole piece is congruent to this whole piece. And we're trying to prove that triangle ACF is congruent to triangle AEB. So this proof is going to be, or this problem is a little bit tricky because the triangles are sort of overlapping, so it can be hard to see, but I think that we can still do it. So far, what we know is one pair of angles and one pair of sides that are congruent. Because the triangles are overlapping, they actually share an angle. They each have angle A. So that's where we can use the reflexive property. Angle A is congruent to itself. So the angle A and triangle ACF has to be congruent to the angle A and triangle AEB. And that's due to the reflexive property and sort of common sense. So now that we know all of this, we have angle, side, angle, we can start our proof in order to prove that the triangles are congruent by ASA. So let's set up our two columns with statements on the left and reasons on the right. And remember, you always start with the given information, which was that angle C is congruent to angle E, which is given, and AC is congruent to AE, which is given. Remember, when you're writing the reasons, you're really just trying to say, why do I know this thing that I wrote over in my statements? How do I know that's true? So the reason I know these first two things is that it was given information. Now the other thing that I know is that angle A has to be congruent to angle A, and that's due to the reflexive property of congruence. So now if I look in my proof, all I've said is angle, side, angle. And those are actually the order of the angle, side, angle, in the triangles as well. So in the triangles, that is the order, angle, side, angle. So that means I have enough information in my proof to make the step and say triangle ACF is congruent to triangle AEB. And the reason is angle, side, angle, congruence. One thing that might help you with this problem if you're having trouble visualizing it would be to redraw the triangles as two separate triangles. So I just want to show you that before we stop this problem. If you redraw it, this is triangle A, B, E, and we also have triangle A, C, F. 
And then you can mark up the information so that you make sure that you really are using ASA correctly. So we knew that angle A was congruent to angle A because they're the same angle. And it was given that angle C is congruent to angle E. And it was also given that AC was congruent to AE. So when you see it this way, it might be a little bit clearer why it's angle, side, angle, okay?